In this video, I'm going to show how to install this Delta shower pan. Drill, safety glasses, caulking gun for the adhesive to go underneath, a sealant, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, tape measure, level, square, shims, drop cloth for later, pencil, hole saw, you're probably going to need a five inch hole saw, which can be expensive, and then construction screws, bit holder, drill bit, these pan head one and one quarter inch stainless round head and a driver. So really quick, here's some of the specialized materials beyond the tools that you're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a shower drain. This is a ABS because we have ABS pipe offset. The reason this one's offset is that our drain is slightly offset. And this is the kind that's just gonna glue on right here. So this will be glued on. These are those uh, pan head screws. So these are inch and a quarter. You can see right there, so that should be good for, you just want a flat head. It's gonna sit on that plastic flange. Then this part's really important. For the Delta shower pan, it says to use this latex acrylic. So acrylic latex that bonds like glue. It says not to use plumber's putty specifically. So we're gonna use this with the shower drain. And then here is some all-purpose um, adhesive, you could use this, you could use liquid nails, doesn't really matter. Next you want to go ahead and dry fit the shower pan and just make sure that it fits. And here, so this is a 60 inches or 5 foot wide shower pan, which is pretty standard. Making sure that I have stud attachment points all along here. And then the next thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that it's level along these edges. So you can see here, it's actually a little off. Okay, so the instructions specifically say not to use shims, but I did just have this uh, kind of 1 8 inch Luon, which is actually what I have down here on top of these old uh, really thick floorboards from the 1950s, just to kind of give them a flat surface over the top. And so I just use another sheet of this, and I'm just gonna cut draw a line here and cut that and then that ended up making it pretty nice and level and and then I'll just put the adhesive right on top of that layer there and that shouldn't be a problem really quickly just wanted to demonstrate how this is gonna go together so this is the bottom piece and this is the top piece that's gonna screw into it So this is going to sit right here and we'll put that acrylic latex caulk on this edge right here for this to seal. And I'll go ahead and show you the bottom. Okay, so on the bottom, you're going to have this rubber gasket. Oops. Just knock that out, but the black rubber-ish gasket's going to go in first. Then this kind of cardboard looking fr friction gasket will go on underneath that. Make sure they're dust free and dry before you seal the latex and acrylic caulking on there. Okay, so this uh, metal flange just pops off in one of those tabs like that because once we get to screwing this, we're gonna need to hold this somehow to get it tightened up. All right, so go ahead and start by using this latex acrylic sealant. Put it on this edge here. Okay, I just got a nice bead. Okay. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and slip this through from the top.
rubber kind of cardboard and then the cardboard one and then we will start screwing this on should do it and there's just a little acrylic sealant sticking out so we'll go ahead and wipe that off okay for this step you're gonna set down a bed of construction adhesive so this stuff is Loctite power grab but you can use liquid nail or anything like that And the instructions say to just kind of trowel this stuff out. So, never really done this with adhesive, but we'll go ahead and give it a go. This is why I kind of drew those lines on here just to make sure everything is lining up once I set it down on the construction adhesive. You can see it's lining up with this line. Just about perfect there. Just about perfect there. Perfect there. Perfect there. Three sixteenths inch holes at all the locations where the screws are going to go in. So I'm going to go ahead and go around and do that first. We're in these inch and a quarter pan head flat head screws. Basically, just want something that keeps it nice and flat so it's not going to poke out into the uh, hardy board or concrete board too much. Right here I use these uh, shims. These are called drywall shims. You can get them at Home Depot. And uh, I'm gonna end up shimming all the way up where the concrete board will go, up that wall. But I just wanted to make sure they got behind here to fill in that gap. So you kinda just use as many as you need. And now you can see it's all screwed in and attached. And now we'll go down and wrap up the plumbing. Hard to see, but you can pretty much see that the drain is lined up. There are little wood chips in it. Should be shouldn't be a problem. Um, those are going to come out anyway once I unglue the P-trap. So now I'm going to go underneath the house into the crawl space, and I'm going to detach that P-trap that's not glued yet, and get a piece cut of two inch P of two inch ABS pipe, and glue it into the bottom of that drain. There's the two inch drain pipe. So that's the P-trap. And that is where it's gonna connect. So all I gotta do is measure a piece that's a little bit longer than that one. And then I'll glue this P-trap, which is still not glued on. Seems pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, so. The next step would be to just glue these together. I'm not going to glue this quite yet. 
just because I'm going to cap this off potentially for a test of the drainage system. But otherwise, that would be it, and the shower would be complete.